Hello again. <laughs> Thanks for watching Mark's Minerals. This is Mark. This is not Mark. The voice behind the men. Anyhow, um, I'm here cutting some fire agate tonight, and I thought I would share a little bit of the actual carving aspect. So, this is a really pretty... Let me zoom out a little bit. This is a really pretty piece of Slaughter Mountain, um, an extreme high-grade piece. Uh, it's two different nodules that have grown together, you can see. So, I'm afraid that as I go down, it might become two separate pieces. I kind of liked it because it, it either resembled like a woodstock, kind of the bird, or maybe a mushroom or something else. But it had this little hole in there. And as I was cleaning the hole, I was trying to find out how deep it goes. I think I'm on top of a solid color. So, so, I wanted to see what the bottom color was. So I'm just... Let's zoom back out. I'm on top of this um, really pretty purple that I found. And this is just the very tip of the, the purple. It might be too dark right now. There we go. Um... So I'm trying to preserve this. I don't want to go past this until I get to a more uniform layer. <clears throat> Alrighty. So, um, you'll see this layer sometimes that occurs. Uh, it's kind of a milky yellow to a milky white. This is a layer of common opal that's occurred in the stone. Um, opal is... Um, a really good indicator of some really strong and bright colors. And I actually prefer a really colorful piece of fire agate to a colorful piece of opal because it's so much more fragile and uh, this much more durable. So you can see it's got some really pretty pink hues, some really pretty greens, there's some blues. And if you look around the outside, um, there's a couple other colors. So as I go down, we'll see what happens. I like to stay flexible. Um, I'm going to see if I can expose some more of the purple. Um, I'm going to see if I can get past the hole. If not, uh, if I can integrate the hole or maybe even uh, set a secondary gemstone in that, in that slot. Maybe set it with a turquoise or some other southwestern gem. So... I figured I'd just share a little of my progress as I'm going. <clears throat> when you're carving, please be safe. Make sure you're taking frequent breaks to stretch your hands. Um, let your eyes rest a little bit. Uh, and uh, you want to make sure that you're wearing a mask. In N9, uh, N95 or better, I use a 3M respirator normally. But since I'm narrating... I'm not going to be wearing a mask. That's why I don't like to uh, do this for very long. And I also use a magnifying visor. I've set up a rudimentary drip system. The drip system is um, a bladder, a bag. Uh, you could use like a one gallon jug and uh, drill a little hole in there. Use some irrigation tubing and then like a little irrigation valve. The whole setup probably cost you about $5 if you go down to Home Depot. Um, uh, let's see, I use a plexiglass hood that this thing is sitting on, and uh, that kind of keeps the stone from flying out across the room. Um, it's it's been a tremendous help, and it also helps me film. Uh, I'm using two different bits today. Um, oops. This is a quick change, but come on now. See if we can actually get it to focus. Oh, there we go. It's a nice, coarse... This one is not centered, but it is a, a nice, thick electroplate. So I've got, like, a nice three or four millimeter electroplate on there. It'll last for a while. Um, but they're a lot less expensive because they're not as durable. Anyway, let's see. 
This is very similar, also just an electroplate, super coarse. And I'm just going to do that till I get down to a more uniform level. And once I'm at the uniform level, then I'll switch to a medium or fine bit. But I just want to show you what I'm doing as I try to get down right on top of that opal layer. Um, so I'm just going to kind of start to peel through. And oops, let's see if I can do this so it stays focused. Alrighty. It's going to get a little bit loud, so I'm sorry for that. <clears throat> um, I don't need a lot of speed. I'm thinking about uh, six or 7,000 RPM. If you have a dial, that's a lot easier to manage than a foot pedal, um, a dial control over a foot control. Um, the foot requires some practice to get it to kind of hold and uh, the back and forth thing back and forth that really burns up a motor really quickly um, you don't need a lot of pressure two to three ounces of pressure is is the most you'd want to use and that's that's pretty minimal um, and if you're not sure grab a kitchen scale set the bit on there and then press and then figure out how much two or three ounces is um, okie doke. Let's start carving. I'm going to turn the water on again at this point. You have a mask. You're being safe. Don't do what I do. I'm going to turn the water up a little bit. Sorry about the noise. You'll see I'm letting <clears throat> I'm letting the weight of the tool do the work and I'm letting those teeth do the bulk of the work. I'm not using the weight of my hand to drive that bit in. I'm just letting it rest on the rock to try to get a uniform field. This is not a race. You don't need to hurry. And every once in a while, just stop and stop and assess the stone. Sorry, I don't come to a complete stop all the time, but for the sake of the video, I should. Because you'll see I'm starting to really expose some pretty color. And wherever that dark brown is, that's the next place I have to go. If it's dark and positional, you just got to figure out what the lay of the stone is, kind of like doing a puzzle. Yeah, and it's starting to open up. One of the things about doing fire agate is you have to really be able to be adaptable. So I'm wondering if I might keep the lobes in different layers. So keep this one at this layer and then just expose the center layer as a little diamond. I think I can do that. I think that's exactly what I'm going to do. All right. So let's see. Let's think on the fly. Um, I don't really want to mess with that purple yet, but I'm going to define it a tiny bit. So let's set that down so it stays wet. I'm going to switch bits. I like being able to have this um, zoom out. 
this quick change uh, bit or quick change handle. It only accommodates, um, I think it's the 2.35 millimeter um, bits, but still there's a lot of choices in that range. Let's see. I'm going to try to carve from the camera. Oops, wrong one. <clears throat> I don't want a blooper section where I'm cutting my hand off. That wouldn't be funny. <laughs> for At least for me. All right. There we go. Now, I'm only using enough pressure to keep the bit in a steady place so that I have control over the bit. And that takes a little while to figure out how much that takes. That's why I'm using my, my thumb as a guide, as pressure, and I just rotate off that. That way the bit can keep a uniform um, speed and, and kind of cutting angle. When I say cutting, these little diamond bits, they are cutting. Uh, you're actually cutting into the stone. So when you're doing that, you want to make sure as you're cutting, it's best to cut in two directions at once. You want to make sure you're, you have nice, even form, pull through. Make sure that you, you kind of keep it evenly rounded as you go. You can also do this, tiny little circles, and get a nice uniform uh, surface. You just don't want to use much pressure. And then here in the middle, I'm still kind of getting down into that valley before the green. You can see as it starts to come through. You can see those layers. Let's see, I do like the magnification on this camera. Oopsie. Here we go. So, at this magnification, that purple looks super dark and is hard to read. But that purple, dark purple is, is super desirable. And the thing is, you can only come down to the surface of it, and then you have to polish into it. Because if I cut all the way down to it, then I'm going to run right through that color before I'm done polishing. Because even as you're polishing, you're cutting through the stone. There's grit inside the polish, and as you polish, you're removing parts of the stone. That's why you also want to keep the same kind of uniform surface. So you can... Let me see if I can get a little pointy tool. See these individual layers? 
I like breaking through a couple different layers because you start to get different color changes. Green to pink to orange to red. Oh, that's too much magnification now. Um, but you do get those, those really pretty color changes when you do that. Let's see? Anyway... I'm going to continue working on this area. I just want to give you a quick idea of what I'm doing. This requires a lot of um, up-close magnification, and I'm going to switch bits. So now I'm going to switch to these 1.6 millimeter little dental bits. You know what? Let's do that. I'm going to give a little pause. All right, we're back. Oops. This bit seems huge. Well, not next to my thumb. And, let's see. Not next to the original bit that we were using. <laughs> so, this little 1.6 millimeter bit um, is from Heiko, H-E-I-C-O. This uh, company that provides dental tools out of Switzerland. They're high precision tools, extremely expensive, fully centered bits, but they're wonderful. Um, they, they are extremely worth the money. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's make sure I got the right foot pedal. There we go. And let's see, I'm, this is an experiment, and cameras aren't necessarily the best place to experiment. If I can make a beautiful little window just using the magnification from my camera. I don't like how it blurs in and out. And it shakes. Yeah, well, the camera shakes <laughs> way too much at this point. I hope you can see a little better. Let's see if I zoom out a tiny bit. I hope you can see a little better that purple that's really starting to come through. And it's that green to purple mix. It's super desirable. And if you look at the side of the stone, um, there's actually a double opal layer. I mean, this thing is deeply layered. At that point, I'm probably looking at two separate stones, but two separate, amazing, wonderful little nodules that are brilliantly colored. And, shucks, I never considered that, but it's almost like a match set since they grew side by side. They may have very similar characteristics. A lot of times they will have formed at different times, but the lines are consistent through here, so hopefully the color transitions as well. Uh, I've, I've noticed some really pretty colors up in here. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, just cut this uh, to where it is, and the rest of it I'm going to do up close. And I will be back with a little bit more. It was going to be a little, little birdie. I probably don't want to say the name because I don't want to get sued. <laughs> or a mushroom. But just roll with the flow. I'm going to go for that purple. Um, I'm going to go really slow for the purple because if I can get a nice little purple mushroom, that's going to be really pretty. And the tiny little hole I can just write off as a little... Uh, wormhole. All right. Thank you for watching Mark's Minerals videos. I really appreciate all the emails, the questions, um, the comments. Everyone's been extremely helpful. And uh, I will 
actually be talking to a dealer and trying to get a, a steady supply of fire agate, um, at least from Slaughter Mountain, if not also some, maybe some Deer Creek and possibly some Aguas Calientes, sorry, Mexican fire agate. Um, all right. I'll be back. Please like and subscribe, and uh, feel free to share my videos. Go right ahead. You have a wonderful night, and I'll be back. Talk to you soon. Bye.